Hello viewers and listeners of Tech Point Zone. Today's video is a follow up on one of the videos we released some time back, which was about how to get the best out of your solar inverter system. And I think the video was released on the 10th of June 2023. So, um, if you haven't seen this video, sorry, if you haven't seen the video, you can just uh, click on the description link that uh, appears above. So, uh, we released that video and uh, a lot of questions uh, followed it and um, uh, there was one particular uh, subscriber uh, by the name uh, user1 k1 wm1u16w who uh, asked that uh, he would like to know why in my own case my inverter stops charging every time the car power from the grid comes comes on uh, because he said in his own case, even when there is power from the grid, the the solar charge controller still charges the battery. So I asked him a few questions. He was able to give answers, and because he was able to give answers, and it sounded like uh, he he you know has a uh, some extent of knowledge about the uh, inverter system. So I tried to ask him more questions. So in my own case. I use a Felicity solar charge controller of 100 amps and in his own case he uses a Felicity charge controller of 120 amps. So let's go down through all of uh, the information he supplied about his own inverter design or oh, sorry his own solar inverter design. Now capacity of his solar array is 5040. He has 12 solar panels, four each are connected in series and then joined in parallel. So, each one of these four is going to come with an average of open circuit voltage of about 40 to 43 to 45 in some cases. And if he's having them four in series, it means he's going to be getting about 160 volts from the solar panels coming into the charge controller, which is good. I mean, he doesn't have to spend so much on, you know, very thick wires from the solar charge control, sorry, from the solar panel to the solar charge controllers. Then he has a uh, four. Uh, uh, three in series. So each of the panel is 420 watts. Inverter capacity is 4.2 kVA. Please pay attention to this inverter capacity and also the inverter voltage which is 48 volts. Also pay attention to this. So let's go down. So on the next page, he has a, um, he mentioned the battery type which is tubular. Then, the amperage of each of the batteries is 220 amps. Inverter brand is Opal. Pay attention to this also. Then, wire size of the inverter connected to the battery, that's from the charge controller to the battery, 16 mm square, which is about 2 EWG. Very good. So, let's go down. And he said that there is ventilation, because I asked him if uh, he had enough ventilation in the, uh, in the battery uh, area. And he said there is enough ventilation to the batteries uh, cool. Then uh, also on the 11th point, he said he has eight 12 volt batteries. Two sets are connected in series and then in parallel that fits the inverter. Meaning he has a 48 volt 220 amps connected in two places that's in parallel. Meaning the total voltage supplied by the battery stack is 400 and so 48 volts, and the total current of all the batteries is going to be 440 amps so let's go down now here the likely cause of the problem is what i started explaining from here but before we go into this let's quickly go into what it has uh what it what it looks like that is um uh set up what the setup looks like so from here you can see that this is the solar panel side and this is the sunshine that is uh, giving the whole energy so this is the solar panel so in, in his own case the solar panel that's the solar area uh, his solar array is about 5,040 watts and in his own case this is the charge controller which is Felicity M50 charge controller and 120 amps then his battery stack which is what we have here is 8 of 220 amps battery 4 connected in series then uh, 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 um, then uh, replicated meaning 4 in series then in, uh, in a parallel of two and in his own case also the inverter he has is opal and which is supposed to be this which is charging the batteries then from the inverter to the load which um, for now we are less concerned with 
So this is what the setup is like. And um, in case you just want to have a view of it in, uh, in, uh, in your head. So let's go back to this. Now, the most likely reason for this issue is that the inverter is not charging the battery with enough current. According to the manuf uh, manufacturer's technical specifications, the maximum charging current of the inverter is 10 amps. So this is a link to the technical specification guide that I'm talking about. I'm going to quickly take us to that uh, guide now. Now, here we are. This is the technical specification guide for, let's see, Opal. This is the inverter the guy mentioned, Opal, right? So this is the technical specification guide. And you can see, he said in his own case that it's 48 volts, which is this, which is this. And also, apart from 48 volts, he said it's 4,200. Now, they do not have 4,200 here. So what, I have here, what they have here is 4,000 watts. So that means this is the inverter he must be talking about. So now let's go down this sheet. As we go down this sheet, there's an area that I want us to pay very close attention to. And that area, they said the maximum output current. Maximum output current. Maximum output current. If you go down here, you can see it's 10 amps for 4,000 watts, then 17 amps for 5,000 watts. So let's go down to the PowerPoint. So like I said there, according to the technical guide from the manufacturer, this man's inverter has a maximum charging current of 10 amps. Now, this 10 amps is not even sufficient to charge the batteries when it is in the bulk charging phase. Because when it is in bulk charging phase, it is definitely going to need more than 10 amps. And the inverter cannot fully provide the 10 amps. So now let's go down the explanation of the uh, reason. So if the batteries are C20 rating, then it means that the maximum charging current of the battery is 440, which is the total amperage of the battery stack, over 20, which is this capacity rating here. It gives us 22 amps. So what it means is if all the eight batteries are of C20 capacity rating, it needs at least 200 and sorry 22 amps to charge this battery during the bulk charging phase depending on the depth of discharge so let's go down to the next page now if the batteries are of c10 rating in fact this even makes it worse if they are c10 rating batteries what it means is that the maximum charging current of the battery should be 440 over 10 which is 44 amps so please note during the bulk charging phase so what this means is that during the bulk charging period, the inverter will not be able to give your batteries the required current. And when your battery, your inverter is not able to give your inverter the required current for the bulk phase, what happens? The intelligent solar charge controller, which in your own case is MPPT Felicity charge controller of 120 amps, will sense that the battery needs more power to charge and then the inverter kicks in. And that is why you always notice that even when there is power from the grid and your inverter is charging the battery, your solar charge controller is still charging these batteries simply because your inverter doesn't have enough power to fully charge the batteries or to give the batteries the required current they need in the bulk charging phase. So in the case of C20 batteries, the maximum current is 22 amps meaning you need an extra of 22 minus 10 because in your own case your inverter is giving it 10 amps so you need 22 amps minus 10 which is 12 amps so that means you have deficit of 12 amps and in the case of a c10 battery or in the case of c10 batteries the maximum current that is chargeable is 44 amps meaning you need an extra of 44 amps minus 10 which is 34 amps so you can see either way during the bulk charging phase I write your batteries are C10 capacity or C20 rating capacity. In the bulk charging phase, your inverter, which is putting out 10 amps, will never be able to give maximum charging to these batteries. And that is why, even when there is power coming from the grid to your inverter, and your inverter is charging these batteries, that is why you see that your charge controller of Felicity MPPT 120 amps is still charging these batteries because if it doesn't you are going to ruin these batteries so undercharging your battery for so long while under use 
is one of the things that quickly kills batteries and that is why most batteries don't last beyond three to six months simply because if you check the technical guide of the batteries many of the manufacturers will tell you this battery can cycle 500 to 600 to 650 cycles but that is under a very very low depth of discharge maybe like 10 to 20 to 30 percent but once you start taking your battery to like 40 50 percent 60 70 percent of depth of discharge maybe out of your inverter not being able to give it enough charging current or maybe you've decided to use a pwm charge controller instead of uh, an mppt charge controller and you are constantly loading your inverters uh, batteries with load then those batteries will not last so use our 1k1 wm 1u16w what is happening to your setup is not bad because your felicity solar charge controller of the mppt type of 120 amps sees that your batteries are not getting enough charging and it is compensated for the deficit do not try to stop the felicity charge controller from charging these batteries even when there is power from the grid because obviously according to the technical guide from the manufacturer of your inverter you cannot put out more than 10 amps in charging these batteries and that is the reason your solar charge controller is kicking into action to compensate for this else those eight batteries will be out in no time so i hope this helps please share like subscribe and also don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you can be the first to know when we release our other videos in future see you in the next video by god's grace bye